Chapter 14 Robert Morton walked confidently down the corridor in the Omnicon Tower, the spring of success in his step. Single-handedly, he would make OCP the darling of both the business world and the popular press. He nodded at the half-dozen smiling executives who greeted him in the hall. Funny how fast things could change. A couple of months ago, he was a has-been. Worse, a never-was. Then Jones blew it. Blew it in a major way. A fleeting memory of Kinney's body sprawled across the Delta City model flashed through his mind. Screw it. The kid was a nerd. Anyway, he had died for a great cause. My career. A young, fresh-faced executive named Walker trotted up after Morton. Hey, hey, Bobby. Vice President. Congratulations. Handball Tuesday night? Morton smiled paternally at the young pup. Love to, Bill, but I've got a date. Couple of models coming over to my place. Phew. <laughs> Need company? Why? You know a third model that can drop by? Morton paused in front of the executive washroom. Sliding a gold card key out of his pants, he slipped it into a slot and walked into the executive quarters. Walker followed him. Inside, Morton grinned to himself as he surveyed the posh decor. Sparkling tiled floors stretched out for nearly a city block. Small, golden signs pointed the ways leading to the jacuzzi, the shower, the gym, the racquetball courts. It was an upwardly mobile executive's dream come true. The washroom was empty, but for someone using one of the stalls. Walker and Morton stepped up to the two urinals. Walker babbled as he unzipped his fly. You're making a real name for yourself in security concepts with Robocop, Bobby. Morton nodded. But, Walker added, I've got to level with you. I hear Jones is plenty pissed. Yeah, 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 Morton replied, taking aim at his urinal. I know, the guy's got himself a killer reputation, but bottom line, it's a smokescreen. Let's face it, he's lost his teeth. The guy's a wanker. Walker's eyes bulged. Morton was treading on thin ice. Are we talking about the same Dick Jones here? Morton smirked. This kid had to learn what the new order was in the tower. Walker, wise up. Jones is old. We're young, that's life. Survival of the fittest, right? Corporate Darwinism. Yeah, but... The guy fucked up. Walker didn't reply. He was staring directly into the mirror in front of him. The stall behind the two men opened. Dick Jones slowly walked up to the sinks and began washing his hands. Walker tensed. With the muscle control of a samurai, he stopped urinating, zipped up and headed for the door. Uh, geez, he muttered. I got a meeting I gotta get to. Uh, see ya. Morton continued his business at the urinal, nervously. He watched Jones slowly dry his hands with a paper towel, crumple the towel masterfully, meaningfully, and stuff it down a dispenser. Jones turned and walked towards Morton, stopping directly behind him. He literally breathed down the young executive's neck. Congratulations on the promotion, Bob, Jones said, his hawk-like nose practically in Morton's ear. Uh, thanks, Dick, Morton replied lamely. Jones stared into the mirror, making eye contact with Morton. Morton was furiously zipping up his fly as Jones intoned, I remember when I was a young executive at this company. 
I used to call the old man funny names. Iron Butt, Boner. Why, once I even called him an asshole. Morton scurried to the sinks and began scrubbing furiously. Jones sauntered over to the sinks as well. But, and this is an important point, Bob, there was always respect. I always knew where the line was drawn. Morton reached for a towel. Jones grabbed him around his wrist. You just stepped over the line, Bobby boy. You've insulted me and you've insulted this company with that bastard creation of yours. Morton gaped at Jones. Jones wasn't shouting, really. He hadn't raised his voice. It was the tone of his voice that was a shout. No, it was more like an insane squeal. Jones's eyes seemed to be the size of grapefruits. I had a guaranteed military sale with Ed 209. Renovation program, spare parts for 25 years. No one cared if it worked or not, Bobby. No one. Morton tried to finesse his way out of the situation. He also tried pulling his wrist away from Jones. He was successful at neither. Well, he said. The old man thought it was pretty important, dick. Jones released Morton's wrist. The tone of his voice grew calmer. You know, Bobby, he's a sweet old man, and he means well. But let's face it, he's not going to live forever. And I'm number two around here, Bobby. Now that's pretty simple math, isn't it? When one is gone, you move on to two. Taking an extreme amount of pleasure in the gesture, Jones spat directly in Morton's face. You just fucked with the wrong guy. Jones smiled. You'd better pray to God that your Robocop doesn't screw up one iota. If that happens, I'll pull the plug on you both. He walked out of the bathroom, whistling. Morton grabbed a towel and wiped the spit off his face. He trudged out of the bathroom. The confident bounce had evaporated from his step.